So psychedelic substances can be broken down into different categories. A lot of people tend to conflate the word psychedelic with the classical or classic psychedelic category. This category includes uh, substances that are uh, ergolines and tryptamines. So these are substances like psilocybin, which comes from psilocybe containing mushrooms, dimethyltryptamine or DMT, which is naturally occurring along with other substances in the ayahuasca brew. Um, and the ergolines includes LSD. And so these uh, substances tend to have a certain way of acting on receptors in the brain, particularly the 5-HT2A receptors, which is the 5-hydroxytryptophan 2A receptor. It's a serotonin receptor. And um, mescaline and peyote uh, are also included in this classical or classic psychedelic category, although I would say their actions are slightly different, um, but similar enough to be grouped together. And uh, these are phen phenylethylamines. Um, so this includes mescaline um, and uh, is naturally occurring in peyote and washuma cactuses. Another category of psychedelics, so we've covered the classics. Uh, the second category is known as entactogens or empathogens. And what makes these substances similar is that they are mixed serotonin and dopamine reuptake inhibitors and releasers. And they include methylene dioxy methamphetamine or MDMA, which is known recreationally nowadays as ecstasy or molly, as well as cathinones. So cathinone derivatives, uh, 3-MMC, 4-MMC, um, and uh, these category, this category has um, an amphetamine-like uh, backbone to the molecule, whereas the classic psychedelics are more serotonin-like in the molecular structure. A fun fact, actually, about the classic psychedelics is that um, when researchers were looking at, at the LSD molecule, they noted that it looks structurally very similar to another molecule, serotonin. And at that time, serotonin was primarily being researched for its role in blood clotting. And it was because researchers knew that LSD had profound psychoactive effects that there was a hypothesis that serotonin might have also effects in the brain. And this led to uh, learning that serotonin is indeed a very powerful neurotransmitter um, in the human brain and elsewhere in the body. So we've covered classic and empathogens. Two other classes of psychedelics include dissociative anesthetics, as well as atypical. So the dissociatives include ketamine, uh, dextromethorphine or DXM, nitrous oxide, and uh, other molecules that have a tendency to kind of unhook the uh, central nervous system from the inputs uh, that are flowing from the rest of the body, from the spinal cord. Um, so these tend to have a, a mechanism where they are um, antagonizing the actions of NMDA or N-methyl deaspartate. Um, ketamine is structurally similar to PCP, which is also a dissociative. And actually ketamine is um, a really important medicine. It's one of the World Health Organization's essential medicines uh, because it is a very powerful anesthetic at high doses and can be used for surgical procedures and other procedures um, without needing to control for a person's airway and have a respiratory machine. Um, so you can imagine that in many places around the world where this type of equipment is very expensive and less accessible, ketamine is very important. And it was actually first developed uh, prior to the Vietnam War and was used, was carried around by soldiers and known as the buddy drug, which would help uh, soldiers to transport their bodies safely off the battlefield when they were wounded so that they could access care. So those are the dissociatives and we'll talk a little more about the uh, psychedelic and not anesthetic properties of ketamine a little later on. 
And finally, we have the atypicals. So the atypicals is a little bit of a catch-all category. Um, it includes salvinorin A, which comes from a plant called salvia divinorum. It includes ibogaine uh, and uh, iboga-derived alkaloids, which come from the root bark of an African shrub, and also includes uh, what is more commonly known to many Westerners, uh, THC. Uh, so the uh, main active ingredient from the cannabis plant. And so each of these molecules, uh, and there are probably others, but these are uh, most commonly cited as atypicals. They all have different mechaniz me mechanisms of action, uh, very unique properties. And again, just as a reminder, the definition of psychedelic to manifest non-ordinary qualities of mind is part of why we even consider cannabis as a psychedelic. If anyone's ever taken cannabis, Cannabis, you'll know that it certainly engenders a different state of mind, a different orientation to sensory stimuli and thinking than the ordinary uh, or uh, common ordinary state of consciousness. This mini lecture is part of Numinous's Introduction to Psychedelics, which is a free course where we explore the world of psychedelic medicines and their potential as therapeutic tools. Check out the link in the description for more info.